Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the hey. homespun. Yeah. <laughs> no, not you, Kyle. <laughs> not you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to the Homespun Yak. Uh, Kyle and I just got done finishing. Well, do you want to go into uh, what what we what we just witnessed? <laughs> yeah, we well today was uh, quite an epic day for the Euro Cup in general. We're now in the round of sixteen, and we'll be closing that out tomorrow to decide the final eight teams. Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you just fine. Okay. My, 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 the, everything's spiking on my end, like in terms of when I'm talking. It's like super oh, loud, okay. so I don't, I don't, <clears throat> I don't want to blow everybody's ears out. <laughs> well, it's uh, it was two games today that were thrilling, to say the least. Oh, and, thrilling uh, is an understatement for sure. Yes, highly entertaining, nail-biting fixtures we had today. We had Croatia. <laughs> we had Croatia versus Spain, and uh, a thriller there that went to extra time. And Spain eventually finished them off with five total goals, five to three, high-scoring game. And then the France-Switzerland game, a game that should have should have went one way pretty clearly. Coming into the game, I think uh, everybody was just looking at it as a game that you can pretty much just wrap up for France as uh, favorites of the tournament. And Switzerland, definitely not. But uh, <laughs> Switzerland played incredible. They missed a penalty and, and you know, in real time, that would have put them up 2-0. But this Hugo Lloris saved it, and France immediately looked like their normal selves and scored two goals in five minutes and went up. And then uh, Pogba scored a world-class goal from outside the box. And then the Swiss came back, scored two goals, one in the 90th minute to go to extra time. France couldn't get a goal. Um an extra time and ended up losing in penalties with Mbappe missing the final one or having his penalty saved by the keeper and Switzerland advance to play Spain in the round of eight on Friday. So obviously in wildly entertaining games that you had everything from penalties to own goals to stunning goals to extra time but just not the way that not the way we wanted it to go today with france losing yeah yeah um, <clears throat> the croatia game was really exciting i remember when i think spain was up 3-1 or something like that yeah 3-1 because croatia went up nil to one one nil at first From an atrocious own goal that was ridiculous. <laughs> that was ridiculous. That's like middle school. Yeah. <laughs> Elementary school. <laughs> yeah. Stop the ball. Like yep. just, uh, just guided it right on into his own goal. Yeah, that was that was remarkable. Uh and he definitely he probably would have been crucified if uh oh my if God. they ended up losing that, but unfortunately well, fortunately for him they, they ended up winning. But yeah, they were up 3-1, and then um, I remember – so let me back this up. I I bought like a month of like Fubo TV so I can actually watch all mm -hmm. these games as well as the NBA Finals or NBA yep. Playoffs. And my boss really loves soccer. He's from Poland. And mm. um, so he, he really loves soccer, but he never gets to actually watch soccer at home because uh, his wife has like Japanese TV and that's like all she has. So what? <laughs> yeah, so they they don't they don't pay for like cable or anything like that. So I just like randomly threw up the game cuz Fubo obviously you can, you can uh, we are not endorsed by Fubo. Cast it. Yeah, you can cast it to your phone or to your laptop or whatever. So I just threw it on my laptop and my phone and I was watching it just personally on my phone and then I just had it running in the lab. Um and he 
he like saw it <laughs> mm-hmm. and he he just like immediately sat down he's like oh i can't believe you get the games <laughs> <laughs> he just sat there and just watched and then uh and then a few of our other lab members just like crowded around just like we're just watching the yeah. games and yeah, uh, it's so anyway, magnetic yeah so spain went up 3-1 and then like both of them were my boss and my uh the other lab member were like oh yeah it's over you know Mm-hmm. And then Croatia just came back and just stunned with with right. the three three. Uh, that was that was awesome. That was so exciting. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I mean, then Spain went up five three, and it was it just kind of petered out after that, unfortunately. Right. But and France, France is just just France. I have a, a lot of mixed emotions about France. Um, I. I think that th- they didn't they didn't seem to be like that like head head and shoulders above Switzerland in terms of their play. Right. Like they just it just it seemed like Switzerland was constantly countering really well. Yeah. Um yeah, they had possession a good amount. Yeah. They they countered well. They crossed the ball in quite a lot. Yeah. And uh yeah, I mean they tack they made a lot of great tackles throughout the game and yeah, you just would it expect france to do better defending and better control overall of the midfield and better finishing uh from mbappe especially he had a lot of shots but none really quite on target um i mean i thought pogba played well he had an insane goal and he he hustled a lot and which he he's a different player for manchester united i'll say that like for France, he's like the best player in the world. But man, you, it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> but I mean, he's got better. He's got a better midfield partner for France in uh, in Golo Kante. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, Benzema, I feel bad for him because he came back uh, in the squad after a long absence and scored two goals and then got subbed out. I mean, I'm sure he was like exhausted and couldn't run i'm not mad about the sub but it just sucks that he he had four goals already this tournament and uh yeah they they just they go out like that it's just never never ideal but their defense was just trash the first half i mean they just played three people at the back and then immediately made a change at halftime which was good um which I don't understand why people don't do that more now that you have five subs. Like, if something's not working, just sub it right away and at halftime. Like, it if used it's to be what three? clear three, yeah. yeah, just before this tournament. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it's like the newest. It's like a brand new thing, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, yes, credit to the Swiss. I mean, they definitely played well. They played a a, a great game. They had to, but. Yeah, it just sucks because you just wanted to see France, potentially England or Germany in the final. But now, like on that side of it, Switzerland's going to play Spain, and then Belgium are going to play Italy on Friday. And then Saturday, Czech Republic plays Denmark. Ooh. And then we're, which could go either way. I mean, Denmark could win. I mean, they could be like the story of the tournament you know from I'm how they started to like i know <laughs> i mean to go to the final like eight is something that they probably did not anticipate coming into the tournament even with christian erickson but now like that's the most ideal matchup you could have is czech republic because they yeah. didn't expect to get that far either um so yeah that could be huge getting to the last four and then uh, tomorrow are the final round of 16 games with Sweden, Ukraine, which I think Sweden will get a win there. Well, Ukraine is still in this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They finished third in their group, but like squeaked in because like another team that could have gone didn't get enough points in a different group or something. I don't know. Something happened that was in their favor because they they had a poor showing in the group stage but still got through and then uh england germany 
And so the winner of those two games will face one another on Saturday in the final eight. Where's so, North I Macedonia? Mean, back home. Oh, wow. Yeah, was, that's the shock of the tournament, really. <laughs> that is the greatest <laughs> shock of the tournament. So tomorrow is the last games of the 16, but I guess you're going to be a neutral fan tomorrow as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck England. So, yeah, but yes, of course. Of course. <laughs> Just an open-minded, you know, non-biased supporter here. Just want a good, clean match. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> Like a police officer ruling on the Derek Chauvin situation. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I feel like. Um, yeah, the uh, yeah Germany and in, in England. I honestly have zero expectation of Germany just because I don't feel like they've played very well. Um, mm -hmm. But apart from that, uh, yeah, I'll be pulling for Germany. And if they get knocked out, then just so be it. I I just like even. <laughs> I don't want them to get knocked out by England. I honestly don't care if they get knocked out in the next round, um, but just never by England. That's that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's just your rule. That's just my like quote: <laughs> "Never by England." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, I think uh, Scotland, Ireland, Wales. France, Germany, I think they all have that mentality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it'll be a good game. I'll be watching it. I'm going to put it in my lab again, and I'm sure I'll hey, entice yeah. everybody to, to watch it. It definitely will. Um, but, yeah, the, the France game was definitely disappointing. Um, I think it also it reaffirmed yet again why I have chosen to step away from having <laughs> teams. <laughs> <laughs> because it it just puckered up a little bit of that that yeah. resentment and anger inside yeah. of me and i was like calm down calm down. <laughs> it doesn't matter like i barely even remember who won the world You're cup not. last time you know yeah and and that's like the team that won is the team that i wanted to win and uh and i can't remember like the Euro Cup before that was Portugal from what i remember yep. which to Against me still France. still to me that was so <laughs> stunning uh, I know because I thought Portugal Ronaldo played went like out. dog shit like every <laughs> yeah. single game they played like dog shit and then they still yeah. won. Oh, that that was I was blown away by that. Um, yeah, so I mean it's like I barely remember these things, so I don't have any emotional ties to it. So I'm thinking to myself like if I can just get past about maybe the next few hours of my life being mm -hmm. unemotional. I'm good because I'm probably going to forget it anyway. Yeah, um, that's true. And, and I, having teams, again, is just so – you get so wrapped up in those teams. R right now the Bucks are playing. Right. Don't they're care. back. Just don't <laughs> give a shit. Yeah. They, I think they're pathetic, to be honest with you. I don't, I don't actually <laughs> think they're a great team. I think the only reason why they're in the situation that they're in, not to derail from soccer, but the only reason why they're in this position is because the Brooklyn Nets were injured. No, oh, that's definitely. it. And if they 100%. win the title, if they win the title, that's they will asterisk. have only won because the Brooklyn <laughs> Nets were injured. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. And now Trey yeah. Young is injured. So it's just like they right. they they're just getting the perfect circumstances for them. So like if I were actually a fan of theirs, would I sit around and be like, "Oh yeah, we won like fair and square, like we had good competition?" No. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that. It it'd be it would definitely, like you said, be an asterisk on it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's still a toss-up, though, for that series. But, it is, yeah. Yeah, if Trey Young's hurt in any way, then maybe it's really not a toss-up. But Because if he can't play, then it's over. But um, the Suns game seems to be – I think they play tonight, and that's yeah, probably – Yeah. Over? Yeah, no Kawhi again. Yeah. Just undisclosed knee injury. <laughs> I heard uh, from Skip Bayless, I don't know how he knows this, but Skip Bayless announced on Undisputed 
uh, like the day after Kawhi got injured, like Kawhi's going to need like surgery or something like that. So it's like he's dead. He's completely out for the rest of the playoffs, but they're just not making the announcement. Right. They're just like, it's a game time decision and yeah. he's out. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and he's out. Exactly. Like maybe he a, might play in like game seven of the finals or of something. Of the finals. Just like yeah. figure out a way to like. And win. And then like be the duct tape NBA, his knee or the something. final MVP again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, but I. So ultimately, it's probably going to be the Suns. Most likely, they're going to go to the NBA finals, which that's yep. actually really exciting because I love to see Chris yeah. Paul. Um, getting there although he's kind of a dirty player so maybe maybe i don't really care that much for him um and he then is probably the probably the bucks yeah and that will be i don't know i just i'll be i'll be <laughs> i'll be kind of i'll be like anti-buck almost just because i, I think so that you, they you just don't had expect such, they just had such an easy time going to the finals and if they win i'm go, i'm going to remind people hey there's an asterisk on that <laughs> yeah yeah it's a weird weird playoff series when everybody thought the nets would get to the final and it didn't happen so now it's completely up in the air yeah yeah right yeah so actually going back to soccer like out of the teams that are still Mm -hmm. one give me a prediction for the teams tomorrow and then Um, i'll ask you another question after that i'm gonna say sweden are gonna win uh against ukraine are you crazy don't they have skomlaskalos (laughs) shevchenko um chernobyl well yeah that could help them but i'm probably going to go with sweden winning uh two nil oh okay and then i'm going to go <sighs> I'm going to go with England here because on paper they should win based on the attacking talent. Well, just overall talent and depth that they have. However, I will say that if they lose, it will be because it'll be their own fault. It'll be their own undoing. It'll be the coach overthinking it and being way too defensive minded and underestimating the uh, blistering attack that Germany has and they're <laughs> and and not uh, respecting the midfield of Tony Kroos and Gundogan but yeah I don't know I think I, I think I'll go 2-1 England if they play the people that I want them to or that they should play um, up front um, because I think midfield upward for Germany is amazing, but defense is a little bit shaky, um, especially if they play like three at the back. Because Mats Hummels is like one of the old. Him and Thomas Müller are both like mid to upper thirties, and Mats Hummels already had a pretty bad own goal. Not that he's a bad player, but he's definitely not faster than any of England's attacking players. He's just going to have to play really smart and conservative, which he can do, but just depends on formation, who they play. I mean, I, I think Germany's coach is better, um, but it, I'm hoping for a really close game anyway. But just if I'm, if I'm being honest, I have to say that if England play the people they should and play the way that they can, I think, they have enough talent to win 2-1 and then they'd play the winner of Sweden Ukraine which you know is not incredibly tough and then if they win that they play the winner of Denmark Czech Republic and then they're in the final <laughs> so it's like jeez <laughs> I know I know and then they would probably I'm probably going to now pick Belgium to go all the way and and win it uh, Belgium, England in the final at this point, but we'll just focus on one day at a time. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. What, who do you think is going to advance all the way? Belgium. So you think, who do you think is going to win between Spain and uh, Switzerland? 
That's a good question. I mean, Switzerland really surprised a lot of people today with how how confident they were and how attack minded they were against France and they weren't intimidated by them at all. And the thing that Spain does really well is just keep possession of the ball um, better than they don't most do teams. Much with it. Right. That's what I've seen from their games. Right. They just kind of go back and forth sideways to maintain possession. And that's okay if you're like winning late in the game. But sometimes if you get caught on the counterattack in that mentality, it might not work. In Switzerland, we're pretty good at that today. They have a lot of fast oh, yeah. guys and guys that can hold the ball up, cross it in. So it should be an entertaining game. But if Spain can actually like finish in the box, because they had they have struggled with that until you know stoppage time, Morata pretty much had the winning goal and. The games before, he's missed a lot of, like, really good chances. And, like, basically his family's been threatened and, like, all this <laughs> kind of stuff in Spain has been been pretty crazy. So it was good to see him get, like, the winning goal today. So maybe a little pressure will be off of him. But I'd probably say Spain 2-0. And then uh, Belgium's going to beat Italy 1-0. And then Belgium's going to beat Spain. But... I think that Belgium Italy game is going to be really good, and that's that'll probably be the goal of the of the uh, the quarters. In my opinion, that's Friday. Hmm. And then uh, Belgium versus England. In the final. Yeah, you have an initial idea. Of In the that. final. Yes. <laughs> I think Belgium's going to win. Hmm. I think if everybody's healthy for Belgium, they'll win. win. I don't know the status of Kevin De Bruyne. If Kevin De Bruyne can't play the rest of the tournament, then no, I will not put money on Belgium because he is like such an amazing creative force who's just incredible – assist maker but Lukaku their striker I'm like he's probably the best in like getting the ball with his back to goal and just shielding people off of him and just giving other players time to to come up and support him in the attack and feed it off and then make a run and receive the ball he's a great finisher he's one of the biggest strikers in the world and uh, he can just do it all. And then you've got Eden Hazard and his brother, um, who scored an incredible goal against Portugal. Timmy Hazard. Yeah. <laughs> Thorgan. Oh. Right. Gloves. <laughs> got it. You got it mixed up with their, with their third brother. Their, ha <laughs> their half wit cousin. Yeah. <laughs> Am I still allowed to say half wit? Are we allowed to still well, say no, because we know what you mean. And okay. that's even more offensive. I watched the uh <laughs> I watched the Netherlands Czech Republic game at this place called the Wooden Nickel on Sunday. Okay. And uh this this guy like shows up and sits beside me and he's wearing an orange um polo, just all orange, and he's probably like sixty something. And uh He's like, he's like, orange shirt, I'm wearing an orange, you know why? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm guessing you're Dutch. <laughs> and he's like, yep. And uh, we watched the game together, and that was fun until, uh, until their player got a red card, and then it just went severely Ooh. downhill. Yeah. Because the Dutch were playing really well up until that point and up until that game. But when you lose your best defender and go down to 10 men, it's not that easy. Against checks, right? Yep. Yeah, and they had some great goals too. But, uh, yeah, the reason why I said that is because of your half-wit comment. He was, I was telling him what I do, and he was like, oh, I'm from uh, Rotterdam, and uh, we make like this – uh, certain type of liquor that like most bars have, but you probably didn't know it came from my 
area and he like pointed to the bar and sure enough there it was and he's like uh he's like back in the 1600s there was an issue with uh the we, they made like a batch that was uh tainted with something and it caused like uh he's like all the people had uh <laughs> he's like all the children were uh <laughs> got retarded and <laughs> and i was like oh no and he's like he's like yeah but they were he's like yeah but it was the peasants so it's fine <laughs> i was just like oh my god <laughs> and i was like oh wow and he's like yeah so it wasn't wasn't like people like us like me and you <laughs> i'm like dude <laughs> you can't say that but it was it was hilarious but uh yeah he watched the game and uh <laughs> that was pretty much it <laughs> he's oh, pissed i can imagine yeah yeah another surprise in the i know in the tournament yep i i remember i was watching the the denmark game and their striker, I guess he's a striker. Yeah. Big dude, just really big dude. Um, I re- he was like dribbling between like four different defenders. They were all trying to get the ball. He's just overpowering them. It was crazy. Oh, no. Just running down the field. Just like not, I mean, not like ridiculously fancy footwork, but just somehow. Right, just the, powering the, through. Yeah, the, the defenders just could not like stop yeah. him it was ridiculous I, I was like wow that guy's really impressive i know denmark has some massive people <laughs> on their team like mm-hmm. um belgium do uh czech republic they've got a striker um i think he's got like three or four goals this tournament and he's probably like six four six five he's a big guy as well with uh, a lot of skill too so I mean, the teams that are left, apart from Italy and Spain, are like pretty physically imposing yeah. teams, you know. And then, like, if Germany and Sweden win, I mean, also a lot of big dudes on those teams. So, right. It's a. It's definitely been pretty physical tournament, but everybody who's everybody's got a lot of skill as well. So that also helps. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's been fun. I've definitely been enjoying watching the the games and whatnot. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of people text me that you know don't normally watch soccer. You know, like my yeah. cousin texted me and a couple friends, and just like, oh, like this is this is a, this game's amazing and <laughs> stuff like that because I know. Because they know that I love it, you know, and am probably watching it. So <laughs> like, hey, dude, you should check this game out. Yeah, there's a soccer game on, bud. <laughs> you might <laughs> thought you might like it. Anyway, hope you're doing well. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been good because, you know, it's always exciting, even for like casual fans, because it's all you know when you get into the knockout rounds, it's always going to be much more dramatic and entertaining especially when it goes to extra time like both games did yeah today and uh yeah it's good to see it's the most this and the the world cup are the most exciting uh tournaments in the world Mm -hmm. of sport and then maybe march madness comes a little bit behind that yeah yeah um the world cup yeah i remember the last, I mean, I've the last several World Cups have been crazy. I mean, just people, people really galvanize. They really, uh, I know, really get get together to watch that stuff. I mean, like you said, casual fans all over the place. You know, not mm-hmm. experts like you, you and I, uh, <laughs> right? Who, who watch <laughs> religiously? Analysts. <laughs> Analysts who who say when France loses. Uh, Maybe it's a changing of the guard. Yeah. Like that guy. It's like, let's let's slow down a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Won the World Cup two years ago. When I looked at their record, they'd won like 
five games in a row or something like that. And uh, except I'm not including the actual tournament because I know they tied to to Hungary and uh, Portugal, right? Um, mm. But yeah, they were doing really well. They just uh, yeah, they just kind of went flat. Just didn't didn't play yeah. as well. It wasn't as annoying as some of the other times that I. What was it? Twenty. 2018 was the World Cup. 2014 with the Vuvuzelas, right? That was 2014. Uh, I think that was 2010 with 2010. South Africa. Yeah, okay. that was Vuvuzela. That yeah. was bad. Yeah, for France, that was a yeah. low point. Yeah, that was a low point. But France was just like dead. I mean, just didn't. <laughs> just didn't, walked off. Basically. Yeah, exactly. It was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't to that degree. I feel. I feel like they did try. Oh, yeah. It's just like they. They just didn't have something like something just didn't kick into gear until like you pointed out when uh they saved that penalty when yeah. uh Hugo uh saved that penalty suddenly they sprung into action but they sprung into action for like 20 minutes 30 minutes and then yeah. they just went back to this kind of flat yeah. version of got themselves. complacent and then let Switzerland counter and score twice yeah yeah exactly so i don't know i don't i don't i don't get why these these players have to be reminded to continue playing really well. <laughs> I know. But it it's happens. just, yeah, it's tough because you don't want to take off like Mbappe because he's like one of the best players in the world. But I don't know. You just got to like, I don't know how to, I don't know what, if I would have done anything different, but it's just, it's a tough position when you see, players that are world-class not doing that well right and you're like any minute they could score and then by the time you're like all right let's take them off it's way too late right yeah oh well till the world cup next next year, year. <laughs> yeah <laughs> clean house for france yeah clean house exactly. it's over. yeah <laughs> yeah man oh man well, we'll see how things turn out, but yeah, I'm still relatively hopeful. Hopefully, Germany can pick up some new players as well. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, they're pretty, pretty young team, and they are revamping. Uh, no matter what happens during this Euro Cup, because the coach is already leaving, they've already got a new one in. Yeah, but yeah, it'll be a completely new team, and hopefully. They start building in the right direction again. Yeah. Uh, I think I was texting you about this. I, I really appreciate the fact that France is shooting more outside the box, um, mm -hmm. which you mentioned that it's uh, it's obviously a lot harder if you're not as skilled of a player because, uh, you know, the accuracy that's, that's involved and whatnot. But I, I remember, I don't know which tournament it was, but Germany – was always trying to get within like you know there's like the big box and then there's a small mm -hmm. box it always seemed like they they just would refuse to shoot unless they were in that tiny box dribbled right they up to that dribbled like <laughs> past the goalie and shot it was so frustrating i hated watching them play because that's all they would do and they, they just never would, like, open things up, you know, by just, like, shooting outside the box and stuff. And remarkably, sometimes those guys can really, like, get really close, you know, just. Oh, yeah. Just, just for, know, through skill alone. Yeah, exactly. So I just don't understand that. And I was really happy to see that France. Pogba's shot, but there, there was also the one guy the uh, on the left side. I think Rabiot, he, the guy with the. Longer hair, no, 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 ponytail, white guy. He's like uh, Coleman. Co Coleman, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He smashed the he, post. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't. He obviously he's not as good of a as, as of a um, kicker or shooter, whatever you want to call it, as Pogba. But like, I still appreciate the the energy that he put. Like he was really chasing. Yeah, because he they they put him on at halftime. Yeah, and he, I mean, he also took like three strikes, and like they all turned out flat but there they you know they didn't go in obviously but like i still appreciate the fact that he gave it a shot sometimes there are times where he could have passed it and it might might have been a better shot but like overall i still like that attitude of like fuck yeah. it i'm just doing this like instead of trying yeah. to get it 
right up to the gates just to kick it in. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, not a lot of people have the skill of Pogba because he's scored goals like that plenty of times. That's just not easy even for pros to do. But yeah, if you've got an opening, I mean, might as well try it. I mean, chances are if it's on target, the keeper's going to not catch it because it's coming so fast. He's going to maybe hit it out of bounds or deflect off of him, and then there's a chance for someone to run in and score. Yeah. So, yeah, I think the more shots on target, the better, obviously. But, yeah, I don't know, I don't know where it went wrong today for France. It just, just wasn't their day. Well, it's weird too. You watch the replays of the keepers sometimes. And yeah, obviously it's completely naive to think this, but like, you watch the keepers and you're sometimes like, really? You could you, you couldn't like, like dive more <laughs> in, in that direction, or like you didn't <laughs> see the ball coming, or you know, I, mm -hmm. obviously I understand that it's it's slow motion or that you're even if you're watching it in real time, um, but sometimes it keepers just like freeze and they just they just watch the ball go by yeah. and it kind of throws me off i'm like you're supposed to be literally the best in your country at this <laughs> yep yeah it is strange sometimes and you just don't know if their view was in the moment like they just didn't even see the guy hit the ball and then by the time yeah. like they realize they're like I can't even move. That's that's I'm a good frozen. point. Yeah, that's that's definitely a good point. <laughs> and some players b intentionally block the keeper, you know, but or they use players as a shield and like curve it around them. I mean, Kevin De Bruyne mm. is great at doing that. But hey, yeah, I mean, speaking of keepers, I mean Neuer has been there since the 2010 World Cup, and I think he's going to have to have a massive game tomorrow. Yeah. Which he can. He definitely can. He's if anybody can have a a game changing game as a keeper, it's him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm definitely curious how that game's gonna turn out. Um oh, actually I don't have my phone on me. Um but I I was telling you that my lab was watching the game on my little laptop and whatnot. And um Right after the France game ended, which I was back home at this point, my, my boss had already left. My boss emailed me literally two minutes later. He's like, did you watch the game? And I was like, no. yes, unfortunately. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, I, I didn't really care about the outcome, but I'm sorry you feel bad. I'll give you a hug when you come in. <laughs> which I thought now, was is, hilarious. Is this man Japanese? No, he's Polish. Oh, that's right. He's Polish. Yeah. So his wife is Japanese, though. Okay, was he? Was he? He didn't even watch the Poland. Oh, game. he did. Oh, yeah. He, oh, he did. He okay. literally did not come into work on those okay. days. Okay, <laughs> okay. Because that was they. They have arguably the greatest striker in the world, Robert really? Lewandowski. Yeah, um, but they have no one else. <laughs> and in the last game, <clears throat> Poland had to win to advance. Um, <clears throat> and he scored two goals, like two amazing goals, like basically created it himself. But I think the other team scored three in the end. And Sweden, yeah, ended up winning in the end. Um, so I know he was probably devastated by that. Yeah, he wasn't happy by any means. He's not a soccer fanatic uh, in terms of like continuously watching it. But, you know, just like anyone, like in the United States, when the World Cup is going on, like mm -hmm. people want to watch. Um, yeah. Ooh. Def that brings Which up. Which we will be in that. Oh, yeah. We're going to, the United States is going to be in the in the World Cup this coming year, right? Because they I won believe that so. tournament. The CONCACAF. Yeah. 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 So it'll be, it'll be uh, full pandemonium. In bars around the country next summer. I'm going to. I'm going to bars for oh, sure. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Because we missed out on the last one, and bars were still rocking, of course, for all the games. But rocking. this time it'll be, it will be uh, pure pandemonium. Yeah. And speaking of the U.S. national team, 
I'm talking about the U.S. women's national Uh-oh. team. Uh-oh. I watched half of that documentary that oh, you, good. you mentioned that you said that you were really excited about. Mm-hmm. The one where they were like uh, arguing for pay. equal pay and whatnot. Right. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. LSF, I think, or LFS? LFG. Let's LFG. Let's Let's go. (laughs) Yes. Because men don't use that type of language, Nick. No. (laughs) Unbecoming of a man. (laughs) Uh, I need to go powder my nose. Uh, yeah, so I watched about half of it. I have. I, I'm just gonna probably end up finishing it at some point, but um, it's. I did not watch it. Oh, but no, I'm shocked. But go ahead. But, but, but give, let's hear your take. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's. It was unimpressive. Oh, uh, if I may say so, from a male perspective. Shocking. I'm sure everybody wants to hear this perspective. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the, the documentary is obviously really like well edited and there's like tons of graphics and stuff like that. But the, the half music. of the docu- yeah, dramatic music, half the documentary that I watched so far, they have not actually made an argument. They, they, they obviously pose the question. They're, they're obviously like, Hey, we're fighting for this, uh, situation and then they explain like when they dropped the lawsuit which was on the world cup like the the day the world cup started that's when they actually i think something along those lines that's Mm -hmm. when they actually uh did the whole lawsuit or like made it public uh, against the soccer federation whatnot for equal pay and whatnot which like fair enough and it's like kind of telling the story of like oh you know how it led up to this and whatnot but they don't actually make any real arguments for why they should be paid equally now you've already heard my stance on this like i do think that they should be paid equally for the national team it's a different story when you're talking about private corporations but mm-hmm. um still like they they don't actually make any arguments so it's all like like them kicking goals and like winning games and it's just like this like movie like their story like, off like, the yeah, field yeah like yeah exactly their story like i'm a mother and like yeah. i had to pay I can for barely... this yeah exactly and like my husband like helps but like he's a tough. trash man yeah <laughs> yeah and i volunteer he's and it's my like, ball boy yeah <laughs> exactly because i can't afford a ball boy it's like (laughs) it's like that kind of stuff and it's it's just like okay i mean i get it but these are all like sentimental reasons like what's what's your factual like what the money break down the money and then offer like an explanation like why should you be paid as much as the men and i completely agree they should and not like throw the success out the window, which they are obviously wildly successful by comparison mm-hmm. to the men. I don't think anybody would take that away from them, but it's not about that. It's just like make the argument, but they don't actually make any arguments. They just, they, they point out the discrepancy for like a minute and then they just tell their story of like, this is my background and this is my life, like for each of the players and then they also show them like winning games against Japan and like winning games against like South Korea and like they're, like kicking mm-hmm. goals and they're like <clears throat> and it's like all this like amazing editing of them like frozen like fist bumping and just right. like yeah right. and it's like girl power they, yeah it's not it's not an argument that's the problem yeah like the, the yeah. whole documentary is supposed to be an argument but it's not there's nothing <clears throat> there it's all fluff which <laughs> it's, it's all emotional exactly it's all emotional there's no like rational <clears throat> argument for it and as a person who's on that side who agrees with the art with what i perceive as my argument i would love for them to actually have an argument to to actually stand behind so i was i was slightly disappointed up to now i mean again i'm only halfway through so maybe the other half will be and here's our <laughs> argument <laughs> here's which, the chart yeah exactly this is why we should be paid uh, just as much as, as men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, you remember how crazy it was 
the last time the U.S. men were in the World Cup, like at yeah. the bars and stuff. I, I mean, remember. that was just what an experience. And I'm sure you remember the last time the women were in the World Cup, how insane the bars were. <laughs> no. You don't I remember wasn't, that? Uh, no, I, I did not. I didn't well, even I'll tell know you they about were it. in the World Cup. <laughs> 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 I didn't even know the World Cup was going on, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I'll set the scene for you uh, okay. in the first game. <laughs> yeah, that's how it went. I mean, I was obviously, I watched the the, the final because we won and I figured we would win, Yeah, the U.S. women. And, uh, you know, people all over the country watched it, but I mean, if you think for a second, it's anywhere near the excitement and viewership as the Men's World Cup. It's just delusion. That's just sheer delusion. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying like that's right or wrong. I'm just saying that is just a simple fact. Right. And I'm and I'm thinking that must have something to do with the pay. I don't know, honestly. Um, and I'm for, you know equal pay if you're doing the same job of course but it's so i mean i was if, thinking I about mean, that i was thinking about exactly that i was like same job but it also there has to be the other part of the equation of equal like the result has to be the same because if right. you hire somebody who's like really sh like they're doing the same job but they're really shitty at it or they they, they don't get the same result then mm -hmm. it's like, and what what I mean by result, and I should clarify this definitely, because then a person could easily jump in, swoop in and be like, well, the women are way more successful, like way better at their job than the men are, relatively speaking. I wouldn't disagree, but it's the result to a capitalist system is not like, are you right. winning a it's lot of games? It's about the money. It's yeah. about the money. Exactly. So, yes. And people yeah. don't want to watch a team that I think you've mentioned a team that can be beat by like 12th graders or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it was like whoever mm -hmm. they ended up playing and they, they got beat by, um, a boys team, a youth, of some youth sort. team of, yeah. uh, an MLS club. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know the numbers. I don't know the figures of what, you know, was generated through revenue and sponsors and things like that. Um, the men versus the women, obviously the women historically have been way more successful in major tournaments than the men. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, like you said, in the capitalist society, um, if your product doesn't sell, nobody cares, you know, I mean, people care, but you know, it's just like, we can't just on paper. It's like, I don't know how we can justify paying you outrageous amount of money when like no one's watching the game, you know, like that's why you can't pay, like you can pay a guy that plays for Chelsea 300,000 pounds a week, but you can't pl pay a woman that plays for Chelsea women FC that much because there's 20 people in the stands, you know, and no one's, there's no TV rights in the United States. And it's just, it's just who wants to pay to see you play basically is, is the name of the game. And I don't know, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that it, it is what it is when it comes to that. I don't know that that justifies you getting paid more or less, but it's, it's not just a clear cut, like answer, boom, like, it should be this boom done, no argument, and I that's why I would Chelsea want it. A woman's team, right? The Premier League has a women's Premier League too, so all the men's team. <laughs> Complete news to me. Like <laughs> pretty much every league, like Fran France, Germany, Spain, everybody's got a woman's like Barcelona. Like, it's like Bayern Munich women. I would imagine. I don't know for sure, but like that's how it is in. England and France, I know, because Alex Morgan played for Lyon like one or two seasons randomly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I'm no surprised you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't one of the 20 people in the stands tell me? I know. I know. But, uh, yeah, it's – I'm not trying to come off as crass, but I'm just trying to <laughs> – just trying to articulate a better understanding. Yeah. And I, th I think when it comes again to the national team, because it is a representation of the nation and it's, it's not like you have this, uh, this business, it's not based on business model. It's not like you have an owner of the national team. Maybe you do. I don't know. But like the idea is that they're representing the nation. Therefore they should be Joe paid Biden equally. Yeah. <laughs> Well, then they should be paid <laughs> equally, Joe. Uh, yeah. But once you get out of that realm, like imagine, so suddenly there would be zero incentive for a person to own a woman's basketball team, soccer team, anything, if they had to pay them the exact amount as a man because the, the profit margin would suddenly shrink to potentially a loss where they would like trying to get Alex Morgan. I don't know all the women players. Uh, let's yeah. just say Alex Megan Morgan. Megan Rapino like, is the girl right. with the purple hair. Right. Yeah. 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 I know her. So, like, imagine like the best woman. Let's say she gets also paid 300,000 pounds a, a week. Mm -hmm. And but but the the revenue is a fraction of what it is. The club for, is bankrupt for, in it. Yeah. Exactly. The, the, <laughs> in the, a day. the club is bank, bankrupt. The owner's going to be like, well, I like who are they going to sell it to? Like one, they're going they are going to go bankrupt, right? They're not going to be able to sustain that. And B, uh, how is that an attractive option? How do you get buyers to buy that? Like, hey, you guys want to hemorrhage money? Come here, like buy my club. It it just doesn't make any sense. So, like ultimately, the the big thing that uh, they they have to fix or people have to fix in general is that the the marketing dollar that's spent on women's sports. And is that ever going to change? Probably not. Because no matter how you slice it, and this is like, this. I mean, we've had this discussion so many times, like <laughs> men are just physically superior to women in like strength and even reflexes. Like a, a lot of like small stuff that people don't talk about, like, reflexes is, is, is a big one. Um, yeah. And so hand eye coordination, hand eye coordination. Exactly. Like all, all, all that stuff. So it, it's just like, it's, it's just on average, we're talking about on average, uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 people know that people just intuitively <clears throat> just eventually learn, Oh, men are better <laughs> at this than all the women. So why would I want to watch the people who are not as good? Because we're right. fascinated. We're fascinated by like by the best. anomalies. We're uh, fascinated yeah. by the best. Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, Chris Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, like people like him, or you know, whoever it might be, whoever, whoever it might be. Um, and it's. That's just, that's something that's like, ultimately, it's just so burnt into our psyche. And it's not something that's socialized. I'm not, nobody, nobody, like literally no one is out here saying, oh, uh, you, you should be, you should be fascinated by who's the best. It's just like what we gravitate towards. Like, like our entire society is like based on, on a hierarchy of like, who's the best. Um, mm -hmm. If you're the best for a job, you're going to get hired. It's right. Like if you're if you're the meritocracy. Best for, exactly. It's all based on meritocracy. And that and you, and I'm, I know I said the word society and it's not necessarily culturally ingrained. It's not necessarily societally in, ingrained. It's literally in the animal kingdom. If you are the best mm -hmm. lion, you are the alpha lion, then you are the leader. Like you are the best and therefore everybody follows you. It's like it's the same thing that ingrains in our psychology. It's when we watch sports. I, you know, when I'm watching Vince Carter, McMahon, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kyle. Uh, when I'm watching Vince Carter, like dunk on like a seven, two dude, you know, it's just like, that's like the best. Right. Am I ever going to see a want, woman do I that? See. No, I'm never Maybe. going to see a woman do that. I'm never going to see a woman do that. <laughs> so because, because very few women can dunk. 
like in the first mm-hmm. place, then t- to have like a 45 inch vertical, not right. just dunk, but have a 45 inch vertical, it's, it's just not going to happen. So, and people know that, like they know that the, the level of fun and the level of maybe not fun, but the level of talent that's, that's not based on work ethic, that's simply based on biology is skewed heavily towards men. And that's why every sport across the board, lacrosse, soccer, baseball, like all all of them, everybody pays attention to the men's sports. And that's where all the money gets poured into because the eyeballs go there. NASCAR. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Indy 500. Yeah. I mean, all of that. Yeah. So I, that's that's my overall argument that it's not like if if it's just how it is. It's just how it is. It's just yeah. But again, if I it, was born into this world. I did not create these rules. Yeah, people yeah. were watching sports longer and, bef- long before I was alive. And you can try to change the rules, but it's not going to matter because the psychology is the way that it is. It's not, again, socialized. It's not like we can be like, well, I was taught to think this way. It's just how it is. It's just how everybody thinks. People are trying to change the rules, by the way. Let me be clear. (laughs) There is a trans woman competing for New Zealand. Oh, in the Olympics. Yeah, 42 years old she is. Yep. And stratified. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. Wouldn't have made it for the men at that age and that doing well for the women because you know most women athletes <laughs> at 42 years old are definitely capable of competing in olympic yeah in weight olympic lifting. level <laughs> weightlifting. yes definitely sure. yeah 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 so checks out checks it checks out perfectly checks out no questions needed <laughs> no go, question. go forth and win yeah let's yeah uh that's the only way new zealand's gonna win a gold medal Somebody, Less. somebody stratified her strength, like based on oh, wow. all the women's competitors, like in throughout a particular point in like recent history, it was a line of all the women's strengths, like all the best women and their peak strength in particular lifts and stuff. And then all the men's and her strength was smack dab in the middle of men's and mm. way out of <clears throat> the standard deviation of what women were. I mean, and they're just cool with letting this happen, like the, the Olympic governing body, like all these governing bodies can suck it. They're the most corrupt UEFA, FIFA, mm-hmm. Super League, the Olympics, so corrupt. I mean, it's just so insane what they're just like, well, we say uh, NCAA oh, yeah. uh, to, to bring up. Uh, dreaded baseball. Once again, I have to, <laughs> I have to support my wolf pack here. They got absolutely screwed Did by they? the NCAA. How so? so, and again, I'm not a baseball guy, but I'm supporting the wolf pack, whatever they do, I will watch it if they're, you know, which they were deep in the playoffs for baseball for college and how they do it in college is you play like regional games. It's almost like a March Madness type thing, like double elimination um, up to a certain point. And then it's like the top eight teams go to Omaha, Nebraska, where like it's essentially like their final four Mm -hmm. location. Omaha every year they have the college final. And rarely do the same. I mean, there's powerhouse teams that make it like every year, you know, but state, I don't even know the last time they made it to Omaha. Like it's been a while. They make it, they beat, they beat the number one team in the country to get there. Then they beat uh, the other number one seed Vanderbilt to advance to like the last four basically. Um, And then Vanderbilt had to do like a playoff against another team. And then they got to play us again. So, we had like a COVID breach the day before the Vanderbilt game, right? So they're allowing full capacity at, the, at Omaha, right? No one has to be tested when they go in, no mask required. Wow. Um, you come into like 
sometimes you come into close proximity with other players when, that you play against in baseball games. Um, so we played the full game, got absolutely robbed. Like I was watching uh, like a little bit. The, the moment I turn it on, it's zero zero. We get a, uh, a hit up the, like down the third baseline mm-hmm. and it hits like the white line. Yeah. And it's like, technically that's fair if it hits that line, I guess. And, uh, immediately they called it a foul ball and then they like, look, they like can review it and they reviewed it. And then they're like, that's fair. Vanderbilt coach comes out and complains. They review it again and call it a foul ball. They reviewed it twice. Well, they made three different calls. Never seen it in my life in any sport. <laughs> yeah. Just whatever three, we'll change it again, and we'll change it again, and and now st- he strikes out, of course, because he's just completely shook by that, and it's just like, wow! I was literally watching. I'm like, what is he, what is the first of all? What's the rules in yeah. baseball? <laughs> Second of all, no one on that field even knows the rules. Right. Third of all, where is the organization? Where is the like? Where's the protocol here? Like, there's got to be a rule about deciding a review. You can't review that shit twice and make three different calls. So I was livid by that. Like, I just came in this game hot. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we lose the game, right? But it's double elimination. And Vanderbilt have, like, the best pitcher. He's going to go number one in the draft. Whatever. Um <laughs> So we play that. We're like, we don't care. We're, we're, we're here and we're like, we're going to shock the world. And the guy, right. you know, Dave Portnoy for yeah, Barstool, yeah, yeah. Right. like he's, he has been riding the, like betting on the Wolfpack for like a month now. And he's just like posting all these videos <laughs> and stuff. And that's been amazing as well. But 2 a.m. the next morning. They drag our players out of the hotel and say, you're done for the tournament because of COVID. What? So we just got eliminated. It's double elimination. We were supposed to play them like the next day or in the next two days. Just go home. You're out because of COVID. What does that mean? Like they just had. NCAA is just like, yeah, you you had players like test positive even though it could have been a false positive because I think some of them were vaccinated and it's just like, they're fine. A, you didn't test the Vanderbilt people. You didn't test a single person in the goddamn building. Um, so what are we doing? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity, especially for NC state players yeah, yeah, yeah. who is like, we didn't expect to be here at all because yeah. we were like the lowest seed we came in the season, lost like four games in a row, like we're unranked. And it's like, that's something like baseball people will remember for the rest of their lives. Cause most of them aren't going pro, you know, like some might, but you just, you just killed these college players dreams. And you just shit on state again. Like, we just got the worst luck when it comes to stuff like that. But that was the most egregious thing I think I've ever seen by the NCAA. And it was just like, go home. Like you're done playing. Like we're not even going to try to drag this thing out or like talk about it. It's just like, you're done. 2 a.m. Get out of here. And like Dave Portnoy made a video and he was just like, he's like, whoever wins, it's an asterisk by it. Because like you just sent these guys home. They were like on fire. You just you first of all, the game we lost to Vanderbilt, we didn't have like four of our main guys. A pitcher had to play first base and he had to hit. Like that just doesn't happen, you know? So they already screw us there and then they further screw us by saying you gotta just go home. Even though legitimately you did not lose in a way that would cause you to go home. So it's just like the biggest outrage I've ever seen in college sports, really. I mean, that I can remember. What? Why would they get them up at 2 a.m.? I don't know. That's what gets me, too. I know. It's all these things that you just, like, scratch your head about. 
And it's like, what the hell is going on? And Vanderbilt, like my cousin is big, a big baseball guy. And he was telling me about like, you know, Vanderbilt are essentially the Alabama of what Alabama is to college football. Vanderbilt is to baseball. Oh. So it's just some weird shit. It's weird. I'm not saying that Vanderbilt's like involved in any way, but there's a clear bias in college baseball, apparently to like these bigger sec and big 10 or whatever league Texas is in. Cause that's all they want to talk about. And that's who they want in the final. So I hate the NCAA for multiple reasons that, yeah. I mean, that, that it's is egregious, a good one, but yeah. Like yeah. our Lieutenant North Carolina's Lieutenant governor <laughs> apparently like wrote a scathing, like open letter to the NCAA. And I don't know, there's, there's gotta be some sort of repercussion for that, but they won't do anything cause they're in NCAA. Well, they got, nobody's in control of the NCAA, so they can do whatever they want. Right. That's what, I mean, but they're granted, they're losing their power. I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. it's, it's actually pretty they rapid. They just lost that. Yeah. yeah that, that court case. case. Yeah. And, People are gearing up to, to attack them again for for a lot of other stuff. So I, I think their their day is coming for sure. Yeah. But anyway, to jump back on uh, the U.S. women's team, I don't know if you saw Megan Rapino, the lady w that has the purple hair. Yeah. Um, she trashed Victoria's Secret <clears throat> a while back. Because she said that's not, that does not represent what real women look like. And that's not a representative of what, you know, women should think that they could be. It gives a false image and all that horse shit. But um, <laughs> because of that, Victoria's Secret, I don't know. Uh, maybe I've already talked about this. No, I did hear about okay. this peripherally, but I don't think we've yeah, talked about this. I, I, and I don't have the information in front of me, but what it appears to happen is that they're doing away with like the Victoria's Secret, like angels. angels. Like yeah. Right. And like the fashion show and all that stuff. Yeah. They're doing what the Victoria's Secret hippos, I think. I think it's what it is. Yeah. The water buffalo or something like the beached whales. I don't know. But they, um, they, uh, they, they hired her to be, in um, Victoria's Secret model. Oh, really? Yeah, as well as other women who have, you know, took a stand in society in some way. It's not, so. So good luck to that. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I mean, what are we doing? Like, it's fine. Like, you want to do that? That's That's fine, but there, there might be a little bit of a, a shift in, uh, I don't know. I mean, men don't shop there, so it might not, they might not take a hit, but probably it's not. just, it's just weird. Yeah. Well, I, just, it's just like a, a lot of, a lot of companies, <clears throat> right? A lot of companies, I mean, look at LGBT, right? The, a lot of companies that are, you know, change their colors, the, the, Rainbow right. flag. Yeah, and on LinkedIn, meanwhile. it's like every company now is rainbow. Yeah. Meanwhile, they you know they they pay money and they don't they don't give a flying fuck about the LGBT. No, you know? it's virtue signaling. Yeah, it's all virtue signaling. I, I I can't. I imagine Victoria's Secret is doing something to just kind of save their own skin because they they probably know that they're they're ide they're idealizing these women in a particular way and now the way that society is going in terms of virtue signaling and and social justice warrioring and mm -hmm. all that stuff that you know they're just trying to get ahead of everything before the uh, the eye of sauron turns to, to, <laughs> to them essentially and that's why every every company's doing that at this point is it i mean is it what they actually believe I think I think for a lot of these companies, no, I don't. Uh, I think they're just doing it to save their skin, to because ultimately all they care about is making money, 
Like if, if the in thing, if quote unquote in thing was uh, making fun of, I don't know, uh, green humans. Let's just say that there was a race of people that were green humans. I didn't want to point out anyone that was actually a particular race. Green. So let's just say green humans. If that was the in thing, I can almost promise you like companies would start doing that. It just because it's whatever drives the money. That's all that matters <laughs> in a capitalist system. And it's really fucked up sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's not morally just, it's not morally correct, but that's just it's the way it is. Yeah. And I'm just like wondering about Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition. Oh, you know, I'm sure, I'm that sure that's hit. changed. And I'm, I'm looking sure at the, I'm looking at it now. Well, it, um, it, dep it depends on the, the, who the target audience is, right? Because if it's men, if the, if the, if the target audience is men, nothing's going to change. Cause again, right. men know what they like <laughs> and it's not, it'll change, some, but then it'll change back. Yeah. It's not going to be a PC thing. Well, that's what you would think, I guess, but. Yeah, it's like saying the finalists here and uh, uh, you know, a woman that uh, can't grow hair is one of them. What? So a bald woman. <laughs> okay. Uh, one is pretty severely overweight. Two. How, how do they decide these finalists? Uh, th third is a woman who's 55. Uh, okay. Yep. Maybe I don't understand what the, the <laughs> sports illustrated swimsuit. Oh, that's, but it's not like a competition. Or is it a competition? I think is it, it is. I think like if you, I think if you, well, that's just like the finalists. I think they all get in the magazine, but if you're like on the cover, I guess you win. Oh, okay. But it's not, it's, Go uh, on. let me just say, it's not men making these decisions, I'm assuming. Of course not. <laughs> because <laughs> it's Sports Illustrated's whatever department. And might I also add another stipulation to that? The average man. Uh, yeah. Because I, I'm not talking about the social justice warrior, uh, <laughs> like kind of inclusive man that tries to. Who deep down wants this, but will not admit that. Yeah. Yeah. The, the guys that, that, that agree with uh, all the, the rule changes and all these weird mm -hmm. situations just so that, they can get, so that they can get closer to those women. Yep. Dude, I've had, I have had some. I have had some interesting conversations with certain women that I will uh -oh. keep as general as possible, but <laughs> they have been high. I don't know these women, do I? No, no, you don't. Okay. Um, this is from my dating life. Um, In Baltimore? They, yeah, Baltimore. <laughs> <laughs> um, just like how's it going? How's it going? I'm from Baltimore. <laughs> Do you hear? Do you hear people sound like that up there? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, you're at university. That's why. Let's, yeah. Well, I'm right smack dab downtown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's more in the cut. Yeah, probably. Baltimore. Um, oh yeah. So like, I've had these conversations with women who are very feminist and very social justice warriory. Which is fine. That's cool. I don't, yeah. I agree with a lot of those stances and whatnot, except, you know, once they cross a the line, I'm like, okay, this is getting too far. The science thing that we've talked about in the past. Um, but anyway, so like they'll talk to me about like, oh yeah, you know, I believe this, I believe that. And we're talking about like this kind of stuff that we're talking about right now about um, being more inclusive and all that stuff. And we were just talking about how certain guys will just kind of agree or just kind of go along with everything that they end up saying um, because, and this is straight from them. They say stuff like you can just kind of tell that the guy does is just wants to be around me, you know, not me, mm -hmm. the, the, the woman. Right. Um, 
and just wants like thinks that that's like some sort of in into like getting to date me or like you know like go out and and uh, have a romantic relationship we'll just put it that way and then on top of that they end up saying things and this is like this is not all in one conversation i like to piece things together over time i'm not like hey i'm going to interrogate you now i just ask mm-hmm. questions just to like get to know a person so i understand okay there's social justice you know they're very much into social justice cool that's fine and then later on maybe a few weeks maybe a few months they like they start admitting like what they're attracted to and they're mm-hmm. attracted to like really like masculine guys that just don't give a flying fuck about any of this stuff like like where they're just they just want to they just want to like dominate this woman and you know the the Mm -hmm. antithesis the complete antithesis to everything that they're fighting for they are attracted to that that blows my goddamn mind every time I hear it. And I've not just heard this from one woman. I've heard this from multiple women. But what are, what is there when you when you clearly point out like I don't hey, point I, mean, I don't point out anything. Okay. I never I okay. never point out anything. I just listen and I just I mm, just mm, mm, okay. Mm, mm. Mental <laughs> my mind is being blown <laughs> like yeah. very quietly. I don't push back ever. I just listen after mm-hmm. I ask these questions. It wow. makes it makes no sense, but I I've definitely seen a trend. Of course, I'm not saying that all women are like that. All social social justice warriors women are like that, or f- ex- like super radical feminist women are like that. Um, but the ones that I've met, a lot of them have been very much. And you know, I just engage with a lot of them because I do believe in feminism, and like that's that's something that I identify with as well. But it's just it's just this. <laughs> it's just this overall trend of like that's just so remarkable to be so attracted to like really masculine guys like guys that that are more on that are far less liberal leaning that are and not saying that they're like trumpers because that's like an, a pretty much an automatic cutoff because i think that they think of like trumpers as just being complete morons so they're not talking mm-hmm. about that but like a guy who's capable and can do all these different things like you know, can cut down a tree and it, you know, it's like, this very attractive <laughs> and like can, can right. change the oil in a car and like is very like masculine in that we can kind of traditionally masculine in that way. And they don't find the guys that try to identify with them as attractive because they, they come off as kind of weaselly or kind of like women and they're not mm-hmm. attracted to women. So, right. Yeah. I, I just find it's completely, it's kind of on the side, but I just find that really, really, really interesting. Again, all anecdotal. It's not like I'm collecting yeah. data on any of this stuff. Yeah, but it is, it is fascinating, you know, what you would, what you are seeing is one thing, but how they truly feel is another. And how they behave. Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Hmm. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. We always like go into all these controversial topics. I'm just waiting for for us to get canceled. Cancellation police. Yeah. Just to grab coming out of the closet behind you and grab you. <laughs> and take you away. Yeah. To Baltimore jail. Baltimore <laughs> County jail. <laughs> <laughs> That is how people from Maryland talk, though. It's hilarious. People from (laughs) there. I'll have to pay attention to that. I know people are really proud here to be from Maryland. Oh, yeah. And to be, you know, especially Maryland. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Crab cakes and football. Oh, good gracious. That and and lacrosse as well. Yeah. Orioles, lacrosse, Ravens, crab cakes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah especially i mean certain counties are a lot like that for sure mm-hmm. i don't think i've i've heard that strong of an accent <clears throat> here in the city at least <laughs> <laughs> well there's learned men in the city <laughs> yeah i guess so <laughs> i guess so 
who would rid that atrocious accent the minute they opened a page of <laughs> Charles Darwin. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Charles Darwin. <laughs> Oh, no, man. I'm kidding, of course. Everywhere has their own unique little accents. We are People inclusive can't here at it. the home spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we love all accents. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Nick loves the Liverpool accent the most. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a place in England. Oh, I know that. I just don't know what the <laughs> accent is. I can't distinguish between uh, like think that of and Paul like McCartney. Cheshire and like <laughs> London. <laughs> Yorkshire. <laughs> Yorkshire. <laughs> Birmingham. <laughs> yeah, that is that is Birmingham. But yeah, I think Paul McCartney's from Liverpool. I haven't listened ever to that guy speak. talk in years. <laughs> so I'll have to, I'll have to look Remember him? Up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one of the Beach Boys, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Brothers with Jesse McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesse McCartney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Dude, uh, that's too good. Oh, mm. Jesse McCartney. Fuck. Hmm. Yeah. Well, sir. Shall we end it here? I think so. I think I've run out of steam. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds good. Well, we'll catch you guys next time. I don't know when that'll be. Yeah. Sometimes it's next week. Usually it's next yeah. week. But sometimes it takes two weeks. Why not? Yeah. Who cares? We'll have it when we have it. <laughs> what How about you that? And you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> you come back for more. Oh, all right. Until next time. See ya. <laughs>